Okay, so now we're going to talk about some properties of radicals. If I have the square root of a, that's the same thing as saying a to the one half power. So for example, if I have the square root of 10, that's like saying 10 to the one half power. In a way, it's kind of easy to remember this because if you think about the opposite of taking a square root, the opposite is taking the square of something. So, like when I was saying, if you're taking the square root of a, that becomes, or that's related to a squared, if I'm taking the mth root of a, that's like taking the power, that's taking the one over nth power of a. But we have to keep in mind that m cannot equal zero, or else this fraction will become undefined and we don't want that. So m cannot equal zero. So for example, if I'm taking, if I have the mth power of 10, that's going to equal 10 to the 1 over m. With all numbers, if I'm taking the fourth root of 8, this is like saying 8 to the 1 fourth. And this is why when we're taking the square root of something, let's just say 6, taking the square root is pretty much taking like the second root. And so that's why this becomes 6 to the 1 half power. Continuing on, if we're taking the mth root of some number that has an exponent, that exponent, that original exponent, so this m, becomes the numerator in our new exponent. So if I have the fourth root of 2 to the third power, That's like saying 2 to the 3 over 4th power. So you see this exponent became the numerator. And this, the, because it's the 4th root, that became the denominator, like it has in the other ones. So the key here is to really remember that if there's an exponent already under the radical, that exponent becomes the numerator. So if I have the fifth root of 10 squared, then that's going to be the same as saying 10 to the 2 fifths power, to the 2 over 5. So I'm taking the nth root again of a to the n times b to the n. That's like taking the nth root of them individually. So it's kind of like I drew a line there, and I took the mth root of a to the n and the mth root of b to the n. And so now we know how to handle something like this, right? We have the exponent inside the radical, so that becomes the numerator. And then we have this m, which is telling us which root it is, and that becomes the denominator. So let's try an example. I know that's a lot of circles and underlines. So let's have the... 6th root of, let's have our first base be 2 to the 4th power times 3 to the 4th power. So it's like saying we can split the 2 to the 4th and the 3 to the 4th separately. So we have 6 to the 2 to the 4th times the 6th root of 3 to the 4th, and so that's like saying 2 to the 4 6 times 3 to the 4 6. Again, keeping in mind that our m is not equal to 0 because then these fractions would be undefined, and that would be unfair. If we want to try one more example, we can have the, let's have the 10th power, the 10th root of 5 to the second power times 7 
to the second power. So that's, I can split these two apart. So I have the 10th root of five squared times the 10th root of seven squared. And so now I can deal with each of these individually. So this becomes five exponent inside becomes a numerator, so two over 10 times seven exponent inside becomes a numerator, two over 10.